Hello and welcome to my tour of p Cruises' newest and most exciting ship yet, Iona. Iona really is a ship of extremes, weighing in at around 185,000 gross tonnes and carrying 5,200 passengers, she is massive. However, it's not just the size and scale of this ship that makes her so impressive, but the new features and amenities on board which are totally new for p as a brand. In this video, we are going to start our tour on deck 5 and work our way up through the ship deck by deck. So sit back, relax and see why this huge ship is perceived as a massive game changer for the world's oldest cruise line. This is the gym, easily one of the largest I've seen at sea. It is filled with a generous array of exercise equipment from treadmills and cross trainers through to rowing machines and weights. This gym is open from 7am to 8pm daily. There is no limit on the amount of time you can spend here. PT sessions are available at an additional charge. This is the spa, featuring more than 20 treatment cabins, a hair salon, a barber shop, an iothermy suite, a large hydrotherapy pool, Swedish heated beds, and a thermal suite with several different types of sauna and steam room. It is easily one of the largest spas on the seas today. This is the Limelight Club, a premium venue costing £25 per person, combining entertainment with a three course meal. This is Vistas, an Italian style coffee bar serving hot chocolates, coffees and 12 different types of tea. Incredible desserts and pastries can also be purchased here for around £1.75, created by French patissier Eric Lanlard. Sitting on the bottom deck of the three-tier atrium, you'll find the Emerald Bar. This is the 710 Club, an exclusive music venue inspired by the lead singer of Take That, Gary Barlow. If you've left your book at home, why not drop into the Harp Shop and purchase a good read? A first for P&O Cruises, a gin distillery at sea. The gin distilled on board can be consumed here or can be purchased in bottles to take home. Not many ships have a cinema, let alone one like this. Ocean Studios is the British inspired cinema on board, featuring a range of films every day 
Playing in four separate screens, films can be booked through the My Holiday app. This is Anderson's, a bar which pays homage to the founder of P&O Cruises, Arthur Anderson. This is Aqua, one of the four main dining venues on Iona. This is Pearl, another main dining venue on Iona. Pearl features a gorgeous staircase in the centre running from deck 6 to 7 and an impressive panoramic glass window at the stern providing breathtaking views over the ocean. All main dining venues are booked through the My Holiday app. You simply join a queue and wait to be notified when your table is ready. This is the Iona Merchandise Shop. And stepping across the corridor, you'll find this accessories shop. If you're looking to buy a handbag, sunglasses or some costume jewellery, this is the shop for you. There is also a mulberry shop on board, as well as a store selling other British brands like Superdry and Barber. There is certainly no shortage of jewellers when it comes to Iona. You can buy all ranges of jewellery from lower end to much higher expensive items where you won't find any price tags. If you've left your AirPods at home, no sweat, drop into the tech shop. You can certainly buy some here along with many other electrical items. Heading back aft on the starboard side of Deck 7, you'll find the Shore Experiences desk in addition to the loyalty and crew sales. Other shops on board Iona include a port shop, a souvenir store, a perfumery and much, much more.
Just by the shops on deck 7 on the starboard side, you'll find the reception. This is the glass house. This is the place to sample a range of fine wines selected by British wine expert Ollie Smith and try some stunning delicacies from Pino Cruz's celebrity food heroes. The massive three-storey panoramic windows also provide impressive views over the ocean as you dine. This is Brodie's, the British style pub on board Iona. And sitting adjacent to Brodie's, you'll find the casino. The Headliners Theatre is the main entertainment venue on board Iona and seats just over a thousand people and provides many West End shows throughout your cruise. We're now on deck eight and we're stepping onto the promenade deck. P&O Cruises certainly listened to the feedback from passengers when it came to the lack of promenade deck on Britannia. Iona has the most impressive promenade deck of any ship I've been on, one which allows passengers to walk around fully 360 degrees. They've also done a superb job of utilising space by providing lush seating, outdoor tables for dining venues such as the Keys and Olive Grove, and most importantly, the Infinity Whirlpools, which I'll come on to in a minute. Here on the after decade, you'll find the Sunset Bar with luscious, comfortable seating with two massive hot tubs on both port and starboard side. If you're steaming east, this is the best place on board to enjoy a sunset and make a toast. One thing I'm certainly not a fan of on board this ship is the balcony cabins on deck 8 which are eye level with whoever's walking on the promenade deck. This would really bother me as you have no privacy whatsoever. This would put me off booking a cabin on a guarantee basis as I know I wouldn't be happy in one of these. And here we are, just one of the six Infinity Whirlpools on the promenade deck on board Iona. Really, really stunning. If this is a sign of promenade decks of the future, I like it. I like it a lot. This is the Keelan Cow, one of Iona's additional charge dining venues. This restaurant sits on deck eight midship in the atrium. 
The dress code at this venue is always casual and you are charged per dish you order. The menu ranges from cheese plowmans through to fish finger sandwiches and chips with curry sauce. A decent range of meat burgers can of course be found here, which are around £8.50 and are of course served with a decent helping of fresh fries. The desserts here are also pretty incredible. This is Iona's stunning three-tier atrium, spanning decks six to eight. I love a good atrium on any ship, but Iona's is particularly impressive. Atriums usually can be quite dark, relying on synthetic lighting during the day because they're usually on the lower decks below the ship's freeboard, where there's little opportunity for daylight to penetrate. However, with these stunning panoramic windows lining both port and starboard side, daylight floods into the heart of the ship providing stunning views out over the ocean or whatever port you are docked in. If you've got a chocolate craving or you're missing some home snacks, drop into this store on Deck 8, selling everything from biscuits to Pringles. However, be prepared to pay a bit more than you would at home. This is Ripples, one of the two ice cream parlours on board. And as ice cream parlours go, it is pretty amazing. This is Sindhu, the additional charge contemporary Indian restaurant on board Iona, with a menu engineered by Michelin star chef Atol Kocha. Sindhu isn't your ordinary UK curry house, it offers a fine range and variety of contemporary and original Indian dishes, such as the paneer tikka crepe with coconut chutney and the tandoori tikka lobster thermidor. The desserts are also pretty impressive, such as the rosewater dumplings invaded in bittersweet chocolate and cardamom mousse. An average meal here costs around £20 per person for a three course meal. However, the lobster which I had was around £15. Also on Deck 8, you'll find The Keys, a dining venue which acts as a great alternative to the traditional buffet on board cruise ships. The Keys is split into three sections, hook, line and vinegar which serves decent traditional fish and chips, Asian fusion with new exciting Asian dishes every day, and the American Diner which serves dishes like burgers, hot dogs, fries and corn on the cobs. We really liked it here, food was decent and best of all, it was free of charge. Sitting all the way aft of Deck A is the clubhouse. We really liked it here, decorated in vibrant tones of gold and shades of green, this Art Deco inspired entertainment venue offers sumptuous seating, subtle lighting and decent entertainment of an evening, ranging from comedy to music tribute acts. The clubhouse is one of our favourite places on board Iona.
This is the Olive Grove, a Mediterranean style restaurant serving everything from lamb to jean to pizza. Most of the menu is free of charge, however some premium items carry a small supplement charge. We loved the authentic Mediterranean decor of the Olive Grove and the food was incredible. Everything we ate was free of charge, however we both said that it was so good we would have happily paid extra for it. We've now jumped up to deck 16 and we're at the aft by the infinity pool. This is where you can also find the grab and go and some outdoor seating for the Horizon Court Buffet. Just one of the two infinity pools on board Iona. It's great to have a swim and look down at the promenade deck, seven decks below. Here you can see the waterfall from the infinity pool above on deck 18. And adjacent to the infinity pool you'll find the infinity bar. This is the Horizon Court the buffet restaurant on board Iona. It is a massive dining venue on board this ship, offering a decent range of dishes throughout the day and well into the night and the wee hours. We found that the Horizon Court offered a range which catered for all types of diet and even surpassed the variety you get on Celebrity. And believe me, that's praise. Of an evening, the beach house can also be found in a section of the Horizon Court, and that is one of the speciality restaurants on board this ship, which carries a small supplement charge of £7.50 per person. This is the Crystal Bar. This is the indoor pool inside the Sky Dome. This is Taste 360, the poolside pizzeria and burger bar. The perfect place to grab a bite to eat if you're dripping wet after a swim and don't fancy drying off and going inside. As poolside eateries go on cruise ships, this is probably the best I've experienced so far. By day, the Sky Dome is an ordinary indoor pool with some bars and restaurants surrounding its poolside. You could easily spend the whole day here if you wanted. However, by night, the Sky Dome transforms into a lively entertainment venue featuring live music acts, acrobats and comedians. We've loved the Sky Dome in the evening as we found it to be really original and made a change from the traditional ship's theatres. On the starboard side of the Sky Dome, you'll find the Laguna Bar, 
and next to it you'll find Sundays, which is one of the ice cream parlours on board. This is Epicurean, the dining venue that offers fine dining, excellent service and beautiful decorative surroundings. The cover charge is £28 per person and you can expect dishes like luxurious fish and chips and they also do Eric Lanlard's afternoon tea. This is the Crow's Nest Bar, a firm favourite with many P&O cruisers. Sitting on the deck head of the navigational bridge, you get great views over the seas ahead, matched only by the bridge itself. This is a great place for a pre-dinner drink or for that cheeky nightcap. I'm a real fan of the decor too, really classy. We're now up on deck 18 forward by the beachcomber pool. The beachcomber bar can also be found here. This is the most quiet swimming pool on board Iona and is less popular with families. It would have been nice if P&O made this pool adults only though, as that facility is noticeably lacking on this massive ship. If you're looking for that more exclusive and quiet experience, why not check out the retreat at the forward of Deck 18. Oh look, another hot tub. This is the Deck 18 view of the Sky Dome. You can't deny it, it is really quite impressive. And all the way aft of deck 17 you'll find some more hot tubs on both port and starboard side. On deck 17 starboard side you'll find some deck games like coits and shuffleboard and the infamous ping pong tables. There's also more outdoor facilities for children as part of the Surface Children's Club. This is The Reef, a vast children's club catering for infants through to young teens. The Reef offers great facilities and offers great peace of mind to parents. The Reef is so security conscious I had to film through windows as only dedicated reef crew can access the play areas. Great assurance for parents that want to enjoy their day and have peace of mind that their children are safe and sound. Thank you. 
We're now on deck 18 aft and this is where you'll find the jogging track, where 7 laps equates to 1 statute mile. Here you'll also find the Panorama Bar, another great bar for catching that sunset in warmer climates, and above it you can see the golf range and the basketball court, somewhere where I didn't venture to on this cruise. This is the Splash Zone, a great place for young children to come and play during the day when the sun's shining and there's not too much of a sea breeze. And last on our tour is the second infinity pool on board Iona, sitting right at the top of deck 18 aft and looking down at Iona's enormous wake below. And with that view in sight, I'm going to bring my tour of Iona to an end. My expectations were very high for Iona, and I'm pleased to say that Iona met those expectations and so much more. However, she is very different to what I was expecting, and arguably very un p &O. Yes, you have some of the elements that p and are great at, like understanding British tastes, making sure pound sterling is used, and keeping firm favourites like the Crow's Nest Bar, which has been a fleet-wide favourite for some time now. However, this ship will be hated by many loyal p and cruisers, because she is so very different to what they're used to. First of all, she is huge. Even I was trying to fathom her size by the end of this cruise. And I know from speaking to some loyal p and cruisers on board Iona, they're not a fan of all this booking dinner and shows malarkey. People like what they know and many don't like change. But this ship gives a good indication of the direction p and are heading. But having said that, I feel confident that p and will gain far more new cruisers than what they will lose in old loyal ones. If I can still be impressed and overwhelmed after 25 cruises so far, then I'm sure that a new cruiser will be hooked after sailing on this ship. Iona is a game-changing ship for P&O, and I'm left feeling really excited for the company's future, and particularly for Arvia in 2023. So all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for watching. Please give us the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for future cruise content. We'll see you next time.